What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Amalgam Chat. One of your hosts, Keena Johnston, alongside Kyron Johnston. Hey, how you going? Nathaniel Redden. Hey. And the return of Shannon Hagler. Hey, yo. We're back. Everyone except Dean. Dean's too busy. Dean and yeah, probably getting drunk. Probably. We're I'm like, we're not. We're getting drunk on Avengers beer. It's water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> we are Stay hydrated, kids. Uh, Shannon, what's the Amalgam Show about? Amalgam Show is about the nerdy and pop culture things that we like and are into. You're the only one who guessed that, even remotely correct. What did we say last hey, week? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I need to add the qualification with any sort of actual haste. You guys like, oh, mm, mm. No, I say ah and um because I want to make a joke about it. And if I just actually say what it is, that means I couldn't think of anything. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Three years of theatre degree. You give me a line, I'll remember it. I just have weird, like, I don't know, memorization. What's that called? I don't know. I have no, no clue. Either, it's not OCD, but I don't know. Uh, some housekeeping, guys. Housekeeping. Oh. oh, God, it's been a while since we've done that one. <laughs> the old days. Housekeeping. <laughs> if you enjoy what you're about to watch, please click that like button. Subscribe. If you have any questions for the show, please comment below or email us at amalgamshowgmail.com. Uh, support us on Patreon, Amal- uh, yeah, patreon.com slash the Amalgam Show. Eventually, we'll do something. Uh, rest in peace, Rory. You will be forever remembered in the annals of history. Thank you so much. You gave us more than we even deserved. <laughs> thank, <laughs> more than we you. ever deserved. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and then check us out on uh, social media at the Amalgam Show, except for Snapchat. Oh, we said Snapchat. Oh, we have a Snapchat? Bebo. No, we said Snapchat. My whole point is to say something that we... Something new each time. Except for Bebo. What's Bebo? Exactly. (laughs) Okay. Except for this weekend on the WWE Network. (laughs) (laughs) That is, uh... That is me showing my age. <laughs> so, yeah. Are you really, okay, okay, I'll start Bebo was a social media platform that just after MySpace that lasted like three months. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Oof. Still beat Google+. Was everyone in my school being like, let's get on Bebo, man. Get on Bebo. I still had a Facebook account at that point. And I was like, fuck off. That's the thing. I, I know there was like a, a period of time where there were a bunch of social medias that yep. launched up. And I'm like, I'm not getting on any of these. I hate all of y'all to begin with. <laughs> and then, yep. um, and then like, and then I guess Facebook one. Like, I guess I'll go here. The only reason I got a Facebook is because um, a girl pressured me to get it. <laughs> Only and reason I got Facebook was because a girl pressured me to get it too. It was my sister. I <laughs> I pressured myself into getting a Facebook account also because of a girl. I went on a camp and it was a camp with other schools and there was a girl that I was like, I want to know more about you. And she was like, add me on Facebook. And I was like, hey, guess I'm getting a Facebook account then. She lives in South Australia. I don't know what I thought was going to happen, <laughs> but you know. I think I got it to play Zynga games. Ah, South Australia. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about how great South Australia is and how much we want to move there. <laughs> no, it's the city of serial killers. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Every exactly. City. No, Sydney is at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Did Sydney ever stop? Um, on a weekend. I think that's when it gets worse. Oh, no offense to anyone backwards. who lives in South Australia. I love you all. Does anyone in South Australia listen to this goddamn podcast? No, I, don't know. I think anyone. Else We're real big in Spain. <laughs> yeah, we are big in Spain. <laughs> We're big in Spain. Hello, Spain. Spain. <laughs> How are we going? Gracias. <laughs> That's racist. When? Oh, I'm <laughs> Shout out to that country that like is a tiny, tiny little country. That's like on the Spain. I think it's Spanish and French border. What? Slovenia. No. Is that Slovenia? I don't think Slovenia is real. I think that's in a anime you watched. No, Slovenia is a real country. <laughs> I think it's in Sword Art Online. <laughs> Slovenia. I met a girl from Slovenia once. Australian you got catfish from a girl from Slovenia once. Australian education system working wonders right now. <laughs> to be fair, like I knew about a lot of Western Europe, but this fucking little country that like is all this known for car races. It's a like, country in the Balkans. No, <laughs> Balkans. That's like the other side of Europe. <laughs> It's still a country. It, it exists. It exists. <laughs> Slovenia does exist. <laughs> Regardless, shout out to Spain. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Remember how y'all had, like, a fascist government to, like, the 80s? That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I learned in university. <laughs> oh, Four years and I learned about one fascist government. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um. <laughs> 
Oh, two. I learned about the new one that we got. <laughs> <laughs> That's more first-hand experience than uni, though. <laughs> Starting off spicy. Spicy. Fashion. Yeah, with this water, am I right? Mm. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. What have you been doing, Karen? Um, so, I recently watched the um, 2003 live action remake of Peter Pan. Is it a remake or is it a reimagination? A reimagination, more so. Because fairy tales don't really get remade. Sorry. I also, mm. one, me being semantic gets worse when I, I did an adaptation course so now I'm like mm, everything's an adaptation of everything but what is anything I'm a cunt <laughs> so I it's have a bachelor's a degree course yeah no, look I've... there's 27 <laughs> stories that can be told in all of human history and this one falls under the hero's journey and in this case the hero is Wendy <laughs> it's is all about her leaving going on a great adventure facing great adversity and coming home I guess she is the hero yeah yeah you twist anything to make it any one of those 27 stories. <laughs> you guys don't watch Unraveled, do you? I, I watch Unraveled. I watch that man just break down for my entertainment. So, <laughs> briefly, Unraveled is Polygon's show hosted by Brian David Gilbert. I love that show. It does, like, seasonal stuff. In season two, he did an episode on the fact that Kingdom Hearts isn't a confusing story if you just follow basic storytelling conventions. But Kingdom Hearts doesn't really follow basic storytelling convention. So he like creates this entire fucking chart of like, this is how it makes sense. Oh like, yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I haven't watched yeah. all of his stuff. I've watched a yeah, couple I of his that. things. I love it when he does those. It's been a while since he's done one of those. He's yeah, um, like the Zelda one, which was his first video, was just him going mad, just like listing and connecting everything, and like it all leads to Monopoly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take fucking notes, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that guy so much. Mm. Um, so what were we talking about? You were doing Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Three. Peter Pan. Um, so yeah, it was a reimagining. Um, Sorry. Kind of, I would argue, a little bit of a, um, a, a gri- it was the original fairy tale gritty reboot. Um, what about? Oh wait, that's not gritty. I was gonna say Hook with Robin Williams. Yeah, well, you you. Yeah, sh- it's more of a sequel though. You straight up see. Um, I counted. Uh, Eight or nine, because one is a kind of unconfirmed death, but they straight up death on camera, they get shot. Cool. It's. Would you call it Peter Pan Begins? No, I. I there's a full theory that I'm working on. Uh, he, please, I, I. In in essence, I believe he's a reincarnation. There this is, is not, Peter Pan 2? Uh, Electric Boogaloo. Yes. <laughs> is this a hero of time? Um, essentially a link. <laughs> Esque character, yes. No, it's a link to Neverland. Yes, he mm. kind of looks like Link. He, he does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to look through this Is IMDb page, like the cast of this movie, because normally when you look at these like trashy movies from like early 2000s, you'll pick out a couple of names and you're like, oh, that person went on to do something half decent. Who? This is just pages of who the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of no-name child actors who probably. I know Wendy did all that pops up every now and then in like British dramas, but that's it. Who's that? Wendy. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, Jason Isaac's the only one that I know. Uh, what else has he been in? I know he was in the first season of Star Trek Discovery. Which he was oh, that's with. why he looks familiar. Um, he's also a fuck ton of people. He's in the Patriot, the OA. Um. He was in the Death of Stalin. He's Superman in um, Superman Red Sun. Oh, okay. Which comes out very, very shortly. Yeah, he, he's, he's done a fair bit. I'm trying to... Th- yeah. Oh, he's in Armageddon. What do you know? That's I've a not good seen movie. that. Was it? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, shit. Sorry. I think we just got to have Jason Isaac. He's an Inquisitor on Rebels. Um, oh, cool. Huh. But yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's Sorry. okay. <laughs> um... Jason Isaac's cast. But I was yeah. trying to picture the film in my head because I can't remember anything. Yeah, that's of it. fair, yeah. yeah so I, I remember watching this movie when I was a child. Yeah, same. Like, very, like, maybe seven, eight years old. Um, and I remember watching it and just being like, hooray, what an amazing adventure. <laughs> this is so great. <clears throat> and then upon watching it as an adult, you just realize that Peter is just trying to kill the two brothers the entire time. Which two brothers? Um, John and Michael. You know, the two Oh, brothers. those two brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah he wants yeah. to bone hard, doesn't he? No, he does not want to bone anyone. He is explicitly stated that he is not human. 
he is a being hence the reason his shadow is detachable it is not his own shadow because when it is detached from him it's completely different hair different everything it's not his original shadow um he is a shadowless monster. I, I'm, I'm putting together a thing where I'm researching and trying to figure out what the fuck Peter Pan is. You should definitely um, check out the original fairy tale, which is yeah, where yeah, the fucked what, up shit Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, Annika has the original fairy tale oh, book shit. in Balina, so I, the next time we go down there, that's when I'll start putting together more and more of the theory um, based off all the iterations of Peter Pan, except Pan, because it... I've seen it before, and it does not build upon anything. It's just like, he's an established character. Anyway, book doesn't exist. He's Blackbeard. Yeah. Uh, it's Theory it's, videos coming to the channel. Yes. I, I'm, I'm going he's to... Lucius Malfoy. Who is... Jason the, Isaacs. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's why his yeah. face is very familiar. Yeah. Um, Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's on the way. Um, click like if you actually would like to see that or, or leave a comment if you um, like it or not like yeah, it yeah please just like it <laughs> degenerates we're giving you free content <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah um, so that's on the way and oh, there's just there's a lot to unpack in this movie okay there, there is a surprising amount he is stated to be an emotionless being he does um he only um, exhibits one emotion at a time, which is consistent with what the fairies do. Oh, I thought you were going to say consistent of a sociopath. Also, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, there, there is a lot in this movie, but things that just pass right over your head as a child. But when you watch it as an adult, you're like, this is extremely, extremely worrying. Yeah. So the only thing I remember about this movie is like having a fun time with it. Yeah. Tinkerbell dies, and then like ten years after that movie came out, all the girls in school suddenly got into that actor. Yes. Like, oh my god, he's so hot! I'm like, why the fuck are we talking about this movie again all of a sudden? Yeah. Like well, it is 2013. We're about to graduate. What the fuck? That's that scene that you're talking yeah. about where Tinkerbell Tink dies so and fucking he... sexy. <laughs> <sighs> but I think they were also talking about like his adult form. Yes. Like, because that kid had grown up by then. Transform exactly. again. I looked at the thing and I don't know who. No, okay. neither do I. But they must have found him on sort of like some weird CW show or something. <laughs> Look, he doesn't. He that seems to be his skill set. <laughs> Fair enough. Ma- making fuck eyes at girls and making people fall in love with him. Um, Sounds like he'd play like a really good serial killer on Criminal Minds or something. Like yeah, that. like honestly, a, a once-off character like that. Yeah, he would do. A lot of actors do, do a once-off on Criminal Minds. Mm. Justin um, Bieber, but I yeah, the same thing. You know, <laughs> one thing that you start to notice is what you see as a like a, a like a cheeky little boy smile when you're a child turns into a devious grin, and then something like awful. that of a trickster god. Yes, <laughs> something awful <laughs> always follows, like. <laughs> the boys, like Wendy's brothers, suddenly not being able to fly. They they only fly in the first part where they land. Once they land on the clouds, no more flying for them. They got nerfed? <laughs> yeah. Um, Wendy is the only one who is able to fly because she inhales the pixie dust. He just sprinkles it on, on the fairy dust. Yeah. He just sprinkles it on the other boys. There is a lot, and I will unpack that. But aside from that... I um, also watched a movie, um, Shutter Island. It's a Leonardo DiCaprio oh, movie. Yeah. Um, I like this movie. Directed by uh, Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. Fucking phenomenal. It's a brilliant movie. I, I, I'd like to talk about it more, but if you guys don't care, I, I can go into spoilers. It is absolutely great. I watched it today. It's like a... Two and like two hour, two and a half hour movie. It's yeah, it's it's like a. Two hours. It, it came out around the time of like the Inception style Christopher Nolan movies that were coming out at a while, yeah. where yeah. the the idea of trying to mind fuck the audience was big in movies, mm-hmm. um, and so it really much falls in that camp. It's a brilliant movie. I don't know if you've seen it, Nathaniel. No, no. I I had not heard of it at oh, all shit. until. Oh. Um, our internet got slowed to um, dial-up speed because we didn't pay. 
<laughs> so we were like, oh, what DVDs do we have? And Erica was like, I have this. We've had it the entire time I've lived here, <laughs> like with you. Let's watch it. And it's an incredible movie. Incredible. It is brilliantly. Beautifully shot. Yeah. The, the twist at the end is something that will literally leave your jaw like, oh, what the fuck just happened? So, what's the basic premise? Because it's not so what I thought it was the, at all. The like, basic premise is... In 1954. Uh, yeah, so following the events of World War II, um, the... I forget the last name, but you follow a detective going to an island Ooh. whose name is Edward. He is going to a um, asylum for the criminally insane. Mm-hmm. Um, there is an escaped patient who is... Again, criminally insane, so not a person you want running around. Yep. Um, I played Arkham games, I know this, yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, exactly. And um, <clears throat> so the entire thing is him trying to find this woman, and as it builds, you, you start to unravel a, a conspiracy, and then the conspiracy builds and builds and builds and builds to be... A like, reveal. Like... like there's satanic stuff going on. There's like old school lobotomy shit happening. Yeah, it's and fucked up. At the time, it was new school. No, no. This was when um, it's based in also when the field of psychology was at war with. Hey, treat them like people. Treat them like monsters. Yeah, yeah this is this is actually during the yeah. yeah this is during the period of time in which um, <clears throat> uh, behavioral therapy became a, a big thing. So yes. post World War Two. Um, and sort of uh, after the discovery of things like shell shock, later known as PTSD. Yeah. After that, it was sort of the someone who just started a psychology degree, degree last year. Um, there was a shift at that time of this isn't working, um, yeah. and also we should be treating these diseases like diseases and these people like people, and lobotomies don't work. And yeah, there was a kind of a change there. It was a it was a three faction war between. Not a war, but like an yeah. ideological yeah. war. Yeah, I, I, I was in academia for five but, years. Um, they were like it was the field of thought of lobotomize the fuckers. They can't hurt anyone if they're mindless little fucks. Yeah. And the other one was use thorazine, this amazing new drug that dociles them, which is lobotomizes them. With, mm, it's very it, thorazine is still used today. It is not. It is not a lobotomizing drug. It is just. It is. It is a. Uh, sedative yeah yeah it's a very strong sedative and then the third one the and then the third one is talk to them see why they're like this and then focus on treatment yeah, that yeah. Of the sim of of the symptoms to cure the disease yeah or at least to treat the disease yeah, yeah. in actuality the behavioral therapy as well was also quite controversial because that yeah. was very much the time of like stick them in a room beat them till they start doing the right thing like it was mm. still psychology still had a long way to go um yeah. because we still had uh fucking what was it i literally just learned about this um there was a set of medical trials that were done on prisoners of war during mm. that time um and other experiments that were done on people that were inhumane absolutely inhumane. The, the way they explain it in the movie is the nazis had their camps Russians had the gulags and they have mental asylums. Yeah. And yeah, yeah there was a whole there's a whole conspiracy yeah. where lobotomizing isn't lobotomizing, it's p- making people become sleeper agents and stuff like that. It's it's yep. a whole 54. Big, Yeah, a yeah, whole, it's fucked up, dude. <laughs> and like you, you see this man come in here completely sane from the get-go. Oh, okay. And then he starts to go crazy he is a former uh, world war ii vet and he was um he was a liberator of death camps and stuff like that so he has big yeah. issues which they try to you know make it seem like he's crazy he went through this who wouldn't snap <laughs> yeah and like oh we're trying to lock you in here and then in the last five minutes everything turns on its head i'm not gonna is it a gonna... satisfying turn on this Oh, it's oh, so it's, good. It's, it's so fucking good. It's fucking amazing, and I don't yeah, want to spoil it, even with spoiler alert. This yeah. is a movie I yeah, believe... it's so good. Like, if anyone is interested in psychological thrillers, 
it is a must I'm see. even like kind of interested like is it like the genre on Wikipedia is like neo noir and yes. I like yeah, yeah. Yes. I love noir movies hundred percent hundred percent it is the shot too... composition in this movie is incredible sorry. yeah it's Scorsese yeah. <laughs> it's it's so good it, sorry it's not a um detective he is a U.S. marshal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like neo noir is exactly what I would call this film. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. The official Wikipedia is neo noir psychological thriller film directed yeah. by Martin Scorsese. Man. It and is... yeah, I agree with you. The the twist at the end, so good. A satisfying payoff <laughs> that doesn't leave any pop like plot holes whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. The whole what, thing from start what, to finish. Like is... it's it's not some lazy M Night Shyamalan after he already made his <laughs> yeah. name in what a twist. Yeah. Like, it's not some lazy, like, hand-handed, I mean, thrown-together twist. It's a satisfying, this, this is more shit. This is more Sixth Sense style, where it's yes. actually well-constructed, yeah. and it does have that... It has that Sixth Sense quality of, I watched it, I had the twist happen, I sat there with a friend that I watched with went, holy fucking shit. And then a few days later, I watched it again. Because I had to see it because... With the context. It, again, it's... With the context, you start to see it. You're like, oh my god, it's so fucking obvious. Yes. But it's not because it's yeah. done so masterfully. Yeah. So, I was looking at the cinematographer for this movie. His name is Richard... Uh, Robert Richardson. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's done a bunch of, like, um, like Oliver Stone, uh, Scorsese, and Tarantino films. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is fine. Like, okay, cool, great thing. Like, those movies are all great. Uh, then the latest movie he's going to do is Venom 2 with Andy Serkis oh <laughs> so okay. this movie's gonna look good at the end yeah uh, well, movies mostly look good nowadays yeah oh, like shot well like you can still yeah. have like things that it's like here's a camera let's go as opposed to yeah. there's a certain point though where I think like the way movies look is kind of weird it's kind of like video games where mm. like at a certain point they look good doesn't matter yeah. how good it looks how good is the movie because like yeah. dc films look good yeah they're shot well yeah they're still trash yeah like yeah yeah I mean, the biggest example i would give of, of a director specifically i fucking hate watching his movies because they're just so hard to like the story's fine characters are fine character development's fine watching the movie is hard the pacing is off michael bay Oh yeah. Anything directed by Michael Bay. <laughs> yeah, because it's just a it's a fucking seizure of explosions. I remember and watching bullshit. Transformers One, and everyone was like, "That was a great movie." I'm like, I couldn't see what was happening on the screen. It was either like rolling too fast or it was too dark. Well, specifically <laughs> the Transformers are like okay. So I liked the first Transformers movies, obviously of the time, yada yada. I actually ended up buying the DVD and the special features. And part of the reason that Transformers movie is so like impossible to to watch in terms of, like, actually with your eyes, um, Mm. is because of the problems they came into when trying to develop a Transformer. Because they came at it from two different directions. They were like, Transformers are big, and they're huge. So in order for them to be realistic, they have to move a certain way. So if we pull the camera back, they have to move slow. Otherwise, you won't feel the weight of the Transformers. They'll, They'll have to move really slow. Otherwise, they'll seem like they're made of foam. Mm-hmm. So the only way to get the speed of the shot so that the action looks good, but the weight is still felt, is to bring the camera right up close to them. So you can barely see the action and all it is is just this calamity of metal in your face. That gives you the speed and weight at the same time. Now, like, that's the only way we can solve the problem, because if not, it was just going to look like... It was going to look like kaiju battles from the 1920s. Like, just two foam monsters, like, running into each other. And that was apparently why they had to do it that way. Other than that, Michael Bay's rest of the film was also shoddy because it's just, it's just bad movie making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just shitty. Yeah. Which <laughs> is why they finally stopped. Yeah. Did they stop? Did they? Because they made Bumblebee last year. Ah, uh, Bumblebee was apparently good, and it wasn't Michael Bay. But still, they're still making those fucking films. Yeah, yeah. It's just Michael Bay isn't isn't attached to it. Anymore. Ah, he'll make something else. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'll do. Batman. No. (laughs) Fast 10. No. I haven't seen it. I think the Fast fast movies, they have a set of directors that they like and they don't want to fuck with them. I've never seen any. I am intrigued by this next one. Next Fast. Yeah, Yeah. Fast 9, F9, whatever they're calling it. um, To the point where I'm actually considering going through and watching all of them. Because I've only ever seen the first two. 
which it was hard because I remember re-watching the first one recently and like man movies used to be long yeah paced poorly like that's uh, the thing like I feel like movies have always been about the same length it's about the pacing and like what's actually happening I don't know I feel like movies were longer too because I remember seeing the runtime of it. it was like 2 hours and 15 minutes for a B grade action movie yeah like that doesn't happen anymore no like that's just not a like and, and it's, if it's you cookie cutter oh, hour and a half 15 minute credits yeah. John Wick 3 was pretty long but like Again, like, I don't mind long movies. I love the Lord of the Rings yeah, trilogy. Yeah. I'm a fucking fan of a long movie. I really liked Endgame. Like, you know. But that's I, the thing, you have to have the content to fill it I, out. Yeah. I was in love with um, King Kong when I was a child. Hmm. And it was a three hour fucking movie. But. And I watched it, like, every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'm considering I want to watch all of it because apparently it gets so bonkers partway through that it kind of just it like like caves in on itself and then becomes self aware and then just leans into the chaos. So like I want to see that happen. Yeah, I uh, kind of funny the YouTubers I follow they're super into the Fast and Furious franchise. So like I saw their reactions to like Fast Nine and I know the general like plot of yeah. Fast. It's about family. It's about family. <laughs> Family and fast cars. Uh, They're barely about fast cars. I mean. <laughs> like having the cars in there is like the Dragon Balls having to be in a Dragon Ball thing. Like every movie of Dragon Ball just has the Dragon Balls in it because like oh we need to set up a plot. We need to have like this. We need to have the Dragon Balls be the day effect marking and the set thing to go or to wrap up everything at the end because mm. it's in the title. So we need to yeah. That's the point of the cars and Fast and Furious at this point. Yeah. Point with that. Yeah. Watching them like. Basically, the point of like Han coming back, I'm like, yeah. oh shit! Yeah, huh? Like even me, like yeah, huh? I'm not fan. Of, like, let's go. This hype yeah. is as fuck. Yes, this this is what people have been wanting for years. Yeah. So like, um, um, okay, <laughs> I'm interested to see what happens with it. Yeah. You got anything else, Kyra? Um, I played a VR game um, called Shadow Legends. It is a Rage Rage Shadow, Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I paused. I was like, wait. There you go. Uh, I mean, you can uh, come on. I mean, come on. If you subscribe today, then you'll join my clan. You'll get 300 silver just for signing up. Nathaniel, stop. No free clout. <laughs> Yeah, because they're just chomping at the bit to sponsor us. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Shadow um, Legends VR. It is a competent, early um, dungeon crawler RPG VR game. It is I've Rage Shadow Legends. Hmm? I've heard of this. Yes. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, I ch- I'm trying to Google this. Hmm? First thing that pops up when I type in Shadow, which should be like Shadow of the Tomb Raider or something. This is the second one. Yeah. It's Shadow Moses Island, which is the Metal Gear setting. Jeez. I don't Google Metal Gear that often. He but... knows what you're about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boss baby. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, uh, yeah. War has changed. Um, the, the thing I draw fault with it is, and it's only because it was ported to the PlayStation. Oh, yes. I wanted to play this game because I saw it on Vive and everything like that, and the combat style and everything was very... It looked technical. Like, you had to block, like, parry, and then when you parry, you can do power attacks, like in the span of the actual you you burst undead and stuff like that because uh you know basic trope demon lord who reigned a hundred years ago is now reincarnated and he raised his armies and oh no you have to fight them because you're the grandmaster templar basic you know yeah. all right here we go we're into it you're not here for the story you're here for the gameplay and it it did well in certain parts, like with the um, archery, you can use a bow, an arrow, you can use a crossbow, you can get stuff that is magic, um, like that, you know, it, you can have like lightning, you can have poison, there's, there's a bunch of different stuff you can do. Um, you go around the map and you kill enemies, you get your standard loot from that. But what I did appreciate was it encouraged you to uh, roam around your environment and try and find, there were like secrets. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could find, and there was just loot scattered everywhere. So you needed to climb places in order to do this. 
and you needed to have a certain amount of runes. They were all Norse runes for some reason. It's just a clusterfuck of mythology. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, you don't care about that. This is just fun. Um, so they got that good and they got the, the aiming and everything of the archery magic well. But the sword play is not good. You eventually just stop parrying the attacks. You power hammer, you just tank every attack and you just fucking waggle your sword in their guts and they fall to pieces. I was going to say, does it feel like Wii Sports Resort? It does. It, yeah. it, it feels like Zelda's Skyward Sword. Mm-hmm. It's got to be hard to do that because one of the and things that's... with okay. sword fighting is the weight. Yeah. Like that's, that's the hard part to translate over. And the, and the one... The one thing that really annoyed me was you can't stand in front of anyone and just have your sword, like draw your sword, because instead of drawing your sword and bringing it out from your waist and have the blade facing your waist, it immediately flicks around. So if you just, so if you grab it, it's like a fucking switchblade and it'll cut the person you're talking. <laughs> and you just go, oh, hey, calm down, Grandmaster. <laughs> That's pretty good. And That's like, pretty good. I like that. No, like, and Have you heard of the higher <laughs> no, no, seriously. There is... The voice acting is not great. There is literally just one Australian guy. So Thank you, like, kind sir. And called him from the, like, the suburbs of, like, um, of Melbourne. And he's just like, Hello, Grandmaster. What would you like today? Oh, I can do this prize. What do you think? And there's there's a barter system and you can be like, I'm charged double and they're like, that's ridiculous. In no realm am I paying that amount. And you're like, oh, can you speak like a human? <laughs> Not some guy on the wrong fours at all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> why is it why is that so difficult? For for fours at all. Why is it so hard to go? Oh, I'm going to talk with a regular staccato in a regular pace. Not Hi! How are you today? It would be, one, the voice director, yeah, because yeah. you're told what to do, but two, I, th- I think it's also just a problem in the industry. Like, there are, there are hundreds of thousands of voice actors out there. I know some of them. There are some really good voice actors out there. Just don't bother. Yeah. It's probably just one of the dudes who developed it, because it was cheaper. Mm-hmm. And, not to say <clears> a bad, not to say that's a bad thing, because sometimes game development studios just can't afford that shit, because they're four guys in a basement. So he probably just recorded it himself under a sheet. Like, yeah. But, you know, in this day and age, you can get... Like, you can go to... Um, what's it called? Uh, Brisvo. Um, Briz voice-o- Brisbane voiceovers. They're like a union-y type thing here in Brisbane. And they have, like, a flat rate, and it's not that expensive. And every voice actor kind of has one of those Brisvo things, and they are all got all their, like... Um, like show reels for like for voice acting. Yeah, um, they're all on SoundCloud. Cool. Like, there's no, there's no way, there's no way, there's no excuse around not hiring a half decent voice actor yeah. in this day and age. Yeah. Like, there's just so many ways to do it. Um. So even if you are a game developer who is you know tight on money, you can get a good deal. You can do this shit. Yeah. So yeah. No excuse for that, especially for something that's released on the PlayStation. Like that went through QA. Yeah. yeah. That went through gold certification. The fuck. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it was a disappointing combat experience and I found myself just using bows and stuff like that. But the mechanics, you can, you can tell there were good mechanics set in place that were heavily drawn back by the PlayStation. Yeah. So it's not a fault of the game, it's the fault of the port. Of the hardware. Of the hardware. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, That's a shame. So if you yeah. have, yeah, because it was a game that I was like, Ah, a combat-based game. Thank fuck, I'm no longer just pew, pew, pew. Because you're a shooting shoot, gallery. You can only shoot zombies, mob bosses. So many fucking times before you just like, I am numb to this. Yeah. This is no longer fun. But Beat Saber. Ah. Which isn't combat, but it's, it's vague, like, swing here, let's go. It's yeah. not precise, like, Elder Scrolls Blades. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... There is some cool elements to it, which you can see would be better on the bio. Like, when you parry, if you parry, hit, parry, hit, parry, hit, 
you, you can then do critical attacks, like you can sever arms. So you oh, can, so then like you can cut off their sword arm and then they start just kneeing them in the guts. <laughs> they just showed up a black soldier. Then, uh, black they knight. just cat the fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Tis but a flesh you just You just fucking hit them in the kneecap with your sword. And they're just like, haha. And then you're like, okay, now that I've got the criticals, I can now sever, sever your shield arm. Which then opens up their neck, which you, that's the only way you Talk can. Metal Gear Rising Revenge. Jesus Christ! Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Or you can just parry in a certain way where you can. It's not always accurate, and I found myself in boss battles being like, parry, oh, that didn't do anything. I didn't swing hard enough for it to register as a parry, not yeah. just to move my sword. <laughs> yeah. So okay. the boss battles were uh, infuriating. But also kind of satisfying when you did beat them. <laughs> did like, you ever come through? Like, uh, you little fucking dirtlings. I finally got you. I just remembered something that would probably be good on the next generation of VR hardware mm. would be a combat game like Infinity Blade. Like instead of touch controls, you're doing it with motion controllers that work in 2020 mm -hmm. and you can still do like what you're sounding what you're saying but it works so you can do the proper parry and like shield blocks and stuff like that you don't put a shield no, I'm saying like yeah yeah you would be able to like hold something up and like there'd be stuff around that and the Infinity Blade was like great on touch screens mm. and then the Epic made them do something else yeah but Probably um Fortnite. aside from that yeah. the game is it's decent enough to play for the price point it is. It's only $27. Mm. Not expensive. Fun enough to play. Mm -hmm. um, there are fun mechanics like when you, you, you only get like one or two shots, like two shots minimum per, um, per spell. Yep. And the way you recharge is you have to have an empty hand and then you imbue magic into the staff, which then allows it to be powered. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's fun. But you have to like touch the end of it and charge it up and stuff like that. And you get a little power wheel to tell you when your yeah. thing's done. It's you. The ideas are there, but at least on the PlayStation, they're not executed properly. They they are executed well enough for it to be not infuriating. To pass QA. <laughs> yeah, but it's just not there enough for it. I can't praise the game. Yeah, uh, uh, cool, cool. Yes. That's fair. And that's all I've really been into. Cool. Um, Shannon, what have you been up to? Oh, boy. Okay. Um, Here we go. Well, part of the reason we haven't done a games lab in a while is because I just haven't been playing much. It's it's, just there's been, not much out. There's just been fuck all that I've been looking at. Like, there's been games coming out and I just don't care. Like the only one I can think of that's come out in the last two months of any consequence to me is Kakarot. Kakarot, and, and I haven't touched it yet. No. Um... <sighs> It seems fine. Yeah. I don't think I actually want to play it. That's that the much. thing. Like once the reviews came out, I'm like, oh, this is where I thought it was going to land after yeah. I saw how much shit they were cramming into it. Yeah. It definitely um, feels like the year before a new console launch, or the year of a new console launch, where things are mm -hmm. a little bit slow here. We're going to get a few big hitters. We're going to get some bangers, and I so won't have enough. 2077. So yeah. So. I think what's up next? It's uh, a Final Fantasy VII remake, so, but there's Doom and Animal Crossing. Doom and Animal Crossing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think two weeks later is Resident Evil Three. Yeah, and then, and then a week after that is Final Fantasy VII remake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then so we go into May. Oh, and then May is Iron Man VR. Iron which, Man VR Avengers then, got pushed back into September. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the Last of Us at the end of May. Is Last of Us still at the end of May? Yeah. Okay, Last of Us at the end of May. Because it's going to come out February and then it's delayed. And then it's just Cyberpunk and Avengers in September. Yeah, there'll be some stuff sprinkled throughout the summer as well. Usually that's where Nintendo releases a couple of decent RPGs. It's when Fire Emblem came out last year and stuff like that. So there's not a lot that I've been playing. So because when, when this combination of things happens, when there is nothing to play and I want to play video games and I have a lot of time on my hands, I default to playing Final Fantasy X. Um, which only person here is going to know what this is, is you. Um, but I did have a question to ask you. Mm -hmm. You've got the Switch version, right? Yeah. Does that have the, um, the boosters, the speed up? I don't think it... No, it doesn't have like the... Like the PS1 games have the boosters and all that that yeah. they uh, did. Final Fantasy 
10 doesn't. Okay. It does have the skip scene feature. Oh, that's nice. It does, it's like one of the, it has the orchestrated and original. Yeah, that's in all of them. It has. Because I was trying to find out, you know how weird it is when your game that has been out for like over a year and I can't find any information on it? Should be able to go to the wiki. I googled it and it didn't, it didn't help me. It said that it did have those things. But all the reports I then saw on Reddit and other places were that it didn't have those things. Because there's supposed to be... Because on the PC version, there is a, a times 4 speed. Yeah, so th- that's speed right. Up. The PC version does have it. Yeah, yeah, the PC version has a times 4 speed up, a, uh, a, uh, a toggle so you can turn random encounters off, so you can just walk through places without getting into battles. Um, or you can actually boost up the random encounters and increase the frequency. Um, and then there's... Oh, an auto battle feature where you just hit a button and it will just automatically select attacks. So you have to sit there tapping the button the whole time. Yeah. Um, the reason this is the thing I was wondering about is whether or not I had fucking wasted my time and whether I should have just got it on the Switch. Because I've got it on PS4 and I've decided to go through and try and stat max the sphere grid. Oh, shit. <laughs> which is an incredibly arduous task and takes the fucking... The sphere grid time. is your upgrade system. Yeah, so the sphere grid... Yeah, like cure and more yeah. attack bonus. So essentially there stuff. are 128 nodes on the sphere grid. Um... They start in like a predetermined order, and they, you know, each time you activate one, you go up in strength or magic or this, and they're kind of dispersed around the whole thing. When you get to the end of the game, if you fill every single node that is currently on the sphere grid at the very start, you're, or take strength stat, it's around 200 ish. The max stats in the game are 255. You can get 255 as your top stat in every single stat. There are eight stats in total. Um, magic. Sorry, uh, strength, defense, magic, magic defense, um, evasion, agility, accuracy, and luck. I I love luck. Luck Luck is actually really easy, so it depends. And that's the thing, as I was going to say, not many people are going to understand this except you, Kina, about like the way they actually do everything in this game. So you can do this in multiple ways. If you fill out the entire sphere grid as it stands, you're not going to get it max stats. You have to you have to find more spheres to add to your grid. The, the way I'm doing it, which is the way that some people do it, some people don't because some people are not as mentally unstable as I am, um, is there is a, a place in the game where you can actually buy something called a clear sphere, oh, which yeah. actually deletes a node off the entire board. So what I'm doing is wiping the entire sphere grid and relaying it in my order. Holy shit. Oh. <laughs> so I've got strength in one section and defense in the other. Oh. I'm actually relaying it so that it is exactly the way I want it to be. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Wowzers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's getting it because it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. It's insane, right? Yeah. Are you doing it on normal or expert? Normal. Normal. Good, normal. good. <laughs> um, the standard sphere grid is the one that, mo- like, even like high level players all use the standard sphere grid yeah. because there are direct lines everywhere and you can map out your path through the board and you know because each of the characters starts in different places so they get different abilities early on in the game and then by the end of it everyone can do everything but in during the storyline at least the way it's designed is that each individual character basically fulfills their own role you got a black mage a white mage a a blue mage yeah so they fulfill those roles the mages are cool they're like my favorite class yeah Red mages can do, <laughs> can do uh, black magic, white magic, and use swords. What? Mm-hmm. They're, cool. They're good. Um, they but yeah, so that's a shit. It's a very long process because basically you have to get sixty-three of each individual sphere type yeah. to add to the board. Then. Once you've done that, you increase your MP and then your HP. It's usually the way people do it. Um, the problem is the way the sphere grid is designed, you, you do have to make a, a concession somewhere. Uh, there aren't enough nodes on the entire grid, because in this game you can actually break the HP limit and go above quad 9. Your maximum HP can be 5 9, basically. Oh, 99,999. Oh, um, yeah. So you can go up to that. But there aren't enough nodes on the grid to have 5 9 HP you can break the MP limit and go up to 4.9 if you want, and to get 2.55 in all stats. There's not enough space for that. So the way I'm doing it, I will be getting 2.55 in all stats, triple nine in MP, and then it will leave enough space for about 71,000 HP. About. 
It depends on the individual character because they all have starting levels that yeah. change it up a little bit. So it's a really long process. I've done all the stats by MP, HP, and luck, and luck is the most difficult to farm for. It's yeah. a real pain in the ass. Um, it takes like 10 minutes to get one luck sphere and the sphere to unlock it. Because you, once you put it on the once you put it on the board, it's not activated. It's just there and empty. Then you've got to activate it using another sphere. I'm 84 hours into this playthrough. <laughs> so you restarted it, and I started a brand new game and just went from scratch. Cool, 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 yeah. cool, 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 cool. Because at this point, <laughs> I've played this game so many times. The storyline, I bash out in 15 hours. Like yeah. it's not difficult to me at all. Yeah. Um, especially because I know the spots that you can grind. You can yeah. grind early on in a couple of different spots that basically bring your levels up to something like... You can basically level up your characters at the starting point to be about as powerful as they would be at the 80% mark of the story. You can boost them to that point so that basically everything in between there is just piss easy. Yeah, you and you only use three characters. You don't even need all seven. Um, you can just blast through the storyline really easily. So that's what I've been doing video game-wise. What was one thing I watched though? The Sonic movie. No, I have not seen the Sonic. Oh, movie. you didn't see it. You I didn't see it with seen... your mate. No, no, we haven't seen it yet. Oh. We, haven't, we haven't. I heard it's okay, so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the thing is that yeah. if it's, we we go to see bad video game movies together, so <laughs> I haven't seen was, it yet. Which used to be all of them. Yes, yeah, <laughs> basically, because we saw Prince of Persia and Assassin's Creed, and we saw all those trash <laughs> movies together. So I'm waiting for another bad one to come out. Maybe it'll be that Borderlands movie. That's oh, probably. <laughs> Um, no, no, no. Um, it was about a week or two after I did my last amalgam show. I went and saw Doolittle. <laughs> Why? So because he didn't have much to do. He was yeah, doing little. Yeah. Fuck so, couple, <laughs> so couple of reasons. Couple of reasons. Um, couple of reasons I saw this film. One, um, I was intrigued by it because it was Robert Downey Jr.'s. It's his, it's his first post Marvel film. Yeah, the first. Time since I since he's taken the mantle of Iron Man off, it's the first movie he's going out, and I like Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to see whatever he's in. <clears throat> I enjoy him as an actor. Two, me and Vanessa kind of looked at each other and went, "We haven't seen a movie together in a while. Why don't we just go see a movie?" We just went and saw a movie, and it was literally the only thing playing at the time that we either of us could even muster a fuck about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, finally, it was also playing in gold class, and we like to see gold class things. So we went and Fair did that. Enough. No um, Also, we were away. We were up at the coast at the time, right. so it was just like a, it was a nice way to start a weekend away. Um, we had a couple of wines while we were there because gold class gold class lets you do that. Yeah. Oh, plug them in. Yeah. Are they all good? No, one's dead. Which one? Is it mine? Uh, yeah, it was yours. Why was mine dead? I don't know. It, you know how these things are. They fall out. They do. They're just stupid. Um, anyway, I wanted to see this movie because there was a part of me that was like, maybe this thing will be all right. Did you follow any... Or like get a crash course in the... Production. No, and that was the thing. I hadn't heard anything about this movie. Yep. But I looked at the cast list and I was like, Robert Downey Jr., Tom Holland, Selena Gomez, Rami Malek, John Cena, um, Kumal Nanjani, uh, Ray Fiennes, Antonio Banderas. Like, it's a list of pretty fucking amazing actors. Like, I was like, yeah. this, this seems all right. I'll be looking forward to it. This... <laughs> this movie... It's not... <laughs> this is Shannon's way of saying it was shit. <laughs> no, was no, no. I was just, okay, so like it, this, this, I'm not gonna say it was. Sh mm. Mm. <laughs> it was a hot pile of horseshit. No, there was something about it that was interesting. The, I'll tell you what I liked about it. Yeah, what did you like? I liked the fact that the very start of the film basically goes, you know who Doctor Doolittle is. Do we? Yeah. Everyone knows who Doctor Doolittle is. Doctor Doolittle is the doctor that can talk to animals. Like yeah. we've all we've all know that part of the story. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't fucking gaslight me on this, you piece no, of no, shit. No, no. I, I just I, I think I've ever seen a Doctor Doolittle movie. No, but you know, like if someone yeah. says Doctor Doolittle, that's the guy that can talk to animals. Like yeah. it's part of the shared knowledge of society at this yeah. point. Is Doctor Doolittle, no matter who or what incarnation the story is, is a doctor that can talk to animals. That's the so it just kind of brushes past that and goes like yeah look you know who Doctor Doolittle is he can fucking talk to animals 
Done. I'm like, okay, cool. Yes. I didn't want to see another origin story. Was basically that. Yeah. So they Doctor Do. So yeah, what they did to Doctor Do Little, they did to MCU Spider Man. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. Oh, and Doctor, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like basically, it was just like, look, we're not gonna, we're not gonna tease out this origin story bullshit again. We're just gonna go straight to the Doctor Doolittle is a doctor that can talk to animals. And then the movie starts. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my biggest problem with this movie is that. All the again, squandered talent. Again, I don't know what the production was behind this, but I get the sense that some point, someone said, yeah, I don't think his voice is working. Because it sounds, like it sounds like every single mm. one of Robert Downey Jr.'s lines was recorded in another studio. Mm. His voice mix in the audio track doesn't sound like it's in the room with him. Yeah. It looks like it's dubbed dialogue, like he's recorded over the top. Which, for those of you who know about film, that's most movies. Almost all movies are ADR'd over the top. But what they do is they mix it in and sync it to make it look like the person speaking. Yeah. But the truth is the microphones that are out there on the set can't catch all the, all the noises, so... Most actors go back into a recording studio after the movie's filmed and redo the entire film line for line into a microphone. Yeah. And they have the movie there in front of them and they try and copy the emotion and all that kind of stuff. And so something happened, I assume, and Robert Downey Jr. had to re-record all of his fucking lines. I don't know why. But either the director said, we need more British out of you, or Robert Downey Jr. just went... Fuck it, I don't care about this bullshit anymore because his accent is awful. It's so goddamn bad. And it's out of place in every scene. Mm. The CGI is okay. The animals look like animals. The mm. voice acting for the animals is pretty good. I didn't get anywhere near enough John Cena. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. Well, is that you your room? You didn't see him. I didn't see him. You just saw a polar bear. <laughs> Where's John Cena? <laughs> Is that the I real reason you want to watch Fast um, 9? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> John Cena and The Rock in the same movie. I'm like kind of into it. Yeah. Um, You've got John Cena there. You go and fucking see him. And then the old mate Robert Downey Jr. is doing fucking nothing. It's He's doing very little. It's, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like he very literally phoned it in. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because I think he was passionate about this, but the thing it's, I know... It's produced by him. It's his studio. Yeah, his wife is the official named producer. Oh, yeah. Uh, or Susan, I, I assume. Okay, his wife. yeah. Um, like, it's his, it was his project. So I don't know what happened here. That's the thing that, that drove me nuts about this movie, is I got to the end of it, and I was like, I don't know what happened. The movie, plot-wise, is fine. Like I said, the performances are, other than Robert Downey Jr., the performances are fine. Um, the actual voice acting of the cast is great. For, mm -hmm. for the little that they get, because not a lot of them get a lot of lines, the one voiced most is the parrot. I don't know who plays that, but... And they, 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 they do well with that. Okay, I, I draw issue with the parrot being the one who can talk. <laughs> Fucking parrot! Let's parrot. take the one animal who has natural vocal yeah. mimicry abilities and let's just use that as the animal that can talk. Can yeah. already I mean, fucking they give, talk! They give... <laughs> They give all of the animals personality. They do yeah. have personality. The parrot is the one that's like, um, is very much the emotionally mature one of the entire group. Uh. Understands. It's the leader. It's the one that's been with, um, with Doolittle the longest and the one that can talk to him in a way that is, that gets him to see things in a different way. Yeah. She, she's, the parrot is basically the adult of the group, yeah. including okay. Dr. Doolittle. Um, they got a gorilla who's like super shy and timid, of course. Yeah. Um, they've got the, the polar bear is like, or, well, what was it? Doesn't like the cold, like really doesn't like the cold, um, which is what's funny about the polar bear. Um, they got a dog that's a super nerd. Uh, they've got the emu that's like always burying its head in the sand, like an ostrich or something like that. Yeah. Like all the kind of tropes as well. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it, is, it is, like, the, the animals do play a, a very big part in it. 
Um, the thing is, is that there's a certain point where this thing just goes bonkers. <laughs> It just goes ridiculous because the whole the premise starts with like Doctor Doolittle, uh, you know, discovers the power. Like they they do this little opening cartoony montage thing. He discovers the power he can talk to animals, so he opens a clinic and has he, he finds a love of his life who can also talk to animals, and they they marry and they they have they have this wonderful place, and they get gifted this um this estate from the Queen of like here's an estate where you can. Do all this work because I don't know. He helped them do. Like I think I think he cured her of a sickness when she was a child or something like that. Um, Fixed her corgi once. Yeah. Well, no, because Doctor Doolittle is a human doctor and an animal doctor. Yeah. Do both. Um, so that all happens, and then she goes on an adventure, goes to go find something, and in the process of that, dies at sea. Ooh. And from that moment on, Doctor Doolittle has shut himself off from the world. Everything is closed in. He doesn't see people anymore. He only talks to animals. Um, and so... The whole thing is that the Queen becomes sick again. Um, and it's a, it's a race to see what's going on. Um, and try and cure her. And Dr. Doolittle's the best doctor in the world, so they try and get that. And he goes, I can only cure this with one particular... Um, he figures out what the poison is that actually is infecting her. Mm -hmm. And so there's only one thing that I need to do. I have to go to the ends of the world. And it's the same quest that my late wife was on. Lo and yeah. behold. Um, and you get to the end of the movie and it's like, I've got to find this thing. It's essentially the tree of life, essentially. Like a dew from the tree of life or something like yeah. that. Right. And you find that and we can give it to her, give her a drop and she's fine. You get to the end of it and then by the end of the movie, like it turns into this thing of like Dr. Doolittle having to do like the one thing. Like, like... The superhero overcoming everything and finally tapping into their latent Super Saiyan power, which is talk to a dragon. Holy <laughs> shit. Right, so dragons <laughs> exist? Yes! So, you just go over the plot. I'm like, this sounds like the plot of Up and the plot of the Dragon Quest game. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and then there's a dragon. And then he does that. And then, like... the one, there's, like, one thing I do like is that they, they do this kind of, like... Um, they fade in and out of like when Doolittle is talking to an animal and he's you know speaking in, in English and the animal speaking English back but then you'll pan around to someone else's perspective and he's just grunting and snorting at them and they're grunting and snorting back so yeah. it's the actual like oh okay so you get to see how he's actually communicating with them I do like that yeah yeah which is cool but man it was just it it just happens so quickly like the movie's Relatively short too. It's like ninety-seven minutes or something like that. Oh, hundred and one. Hundred and one. There you go. But you know, like, credits. Yeah. Off by four minutes. Yeah. How like dead. Yeah. <laughs> but like it was, it was barely a barely a time in there. Like it, yeah. it, it went so fast and, and man, oh man, oh man. Like it was just that ADR. It was yeah. just that. How is every every other actor sounds fine, but your key star. Yeah. Doesn't sound like he's in the room. What have you done? So that was a clusterfuck. The, the thing I know about that movie is that, like, they half asked the production. Like, the director was very much, we'll fix it in post. Like, oh. Very much fix it in post. And then Ugh. they, and then I just checked, they went, the, after screen testings were super poor, they went in, like, a month of reshoots. Um, and then it doesn't surprise me yeah because mm -hmm. like this this thing does feel like clobbered together at the last second yeah um, does it like it's is it as clobbered together as suicide squad suicide squad's clobberedness is in its editing it's and it joking. still doesn't change the overall vibe of no no it's, it's it's worse than that. Okay. It's worse than that. it's worse than that because again because it because your key star, who has the most screen time of any person in the film and who is there in the most important moments, the the like they try and edit around it too. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the time you'll hear Robert Downey Jr.'s voice, but he'll be walking with his back to the camera, or he'll be turning, or he'll be just out of shot. Um, and then when you do see him, it's 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 not quite synced, or it's just a little bit out. Like it's could there be an issue where that was a audio issue, like a, your theatre's audio being like having a lag? No, 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 no. Because no, no. like, like I'm, I'm telling you here, because like 
th- this is a professional movie studio releasing yeah. a bl- like a big budget film. There is no way because the way it's done in like in like the basis terms and, and like there are sound engineers and sound designers out here will tear me a new one for explaining it as basic as this. But essentially, what they try and do when they're doing this stuff is that rooms and places that you are actually have a sound behind them. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. There's nothing dead about it yeah. like a, a recording studio has no sound there's nothing going on it's, but yeah. there is there is you know there's the fan there's there's air moving around there yeah. is you know or even if it's still air there is a sound to the room so what what they usually do is when they're shooting on location or they're shooting anywhere they will take what's called atmos which is basically just everyone shut the fuck up we're just going to hit record on the mics for about 15 seconds and just record the atmosphere of the room and yeah. they close that off and then what that means they can do is that when they go into the recording booth to actually do your ADR you can talk into the mic and you can get that and then they can layer Atmos behind it so it at least sounds like you're in the same fucking room you took the shot now if those reshoots are correct what it sounds like is A they didn't have Atmos for the areas that they were doing in or B they did so much reshooting that the Atmos doesn't actually match anymore Yeah. because at the time of the recording it was different to when they did it because I'll tell you now, the sound between a cold room and a hot room is, like, it doesn't... In everyday life, you don't hear it, but when you're watching a movie... Yeah, yeah, and in that kind of thing, like, you can tell what that's supposed to sound like. Like I said, he sounded... Like, he was on the screen, his face was there, his lips were moving, but his voice was coming out of recording studio. Like, it was that clear, that it was that different. And that's just not a mistake you should make in, like, amateur filmmaking. No. Let alone a fucking big budget movie like this. And like I said, had it not been for, like, this weird editing and this weird shambolic put together of it, it might have been, like, an okay B movie. Like, a, yeah, take your kids to see it, I don't care. Yeah. Kind of thing. But even then, I'm like, nah, man. There's shit to see. It's better. Mm-hmm. So that trailer for Mulan, I was like, that yeah, actually doesn't look too bad. Of all the live-action remakes of Disney movies they've had so far, that Mulan one looks pretty kick-ass. It's the first one rated PG-13. Oh, shit. It should have been R. <laughs> they should have gone the whole hog with it. Yeah. Yeah. It should have Mulan gone is not a timid story. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't look like it's going to be. Like, they're, they're pushing it, but not too far. Because they still want oh, kids to so see it. So it's... Uh, PG's here. M is here. They're sim, right? Here. No, PG-13 is our M. Yeah, PG thirteen in America is our M rating. Yeah, so we oh. have we have G P G M. Okay, they have G P G P G thirteen R. We have an M A in between. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's um, it's so that's it why looks... everything just skips all the time. Just like Deadpool's an R rating. That's what all the headlines are. But here it's just M A because you have to do some fucked up shit to get an R rating. Yeah, yeah, you have to pull some last. You have to kill people for two and a half hours shit. straight. Yeah, that's dead. Uh, that's um, John Wick. Yeah, yeah, I was saying on some last house on the left type shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that Milan yeah. one looks good because it definitely looks like they. It looks like they, from what the trailer saw, it looks like they're ditching Mushu. Yeah. Mushu was never part of the original tale. I know. And also, he doesn't... I, watching Mulan, he's not the thing I give a shit about in that movie. No, but he's a fun character. He is fun, and like... But like, I don't care about his arc. I don't care about his... I mean, I enjoyed Mushu. So yeah. I was a little bit bummed when I didn't see Mushu was in there. All the cricketing and that kind of stuff. But the story of Mulan seemed to be very much there. Um, my question will be, as per usual with these ones, how much of the original is going to be intact, i.e. songs and all that kind of stuff? Uh, from what I understand there's no songs but there's going to be like orchestral version like if they do a training montage it'll be like the orchestral version of make a man editing. right because that was the thing that i was going to say was that the tone that they are setting in that trailer mm-hmm. very much does not match the disney song style yeah. like i was yeah. gonna be like it doesn't like the sing-songy nature of the actual mulan which is still an incredible film mm-hmm. um doesn't quite match with what you're showing me on the visuals if they're going that route cool i'm cool with it i really want to see this because what that means is that I don't have a problem with this remake because it's fundamentally not the same as the others. Yeah. Because yes. the other ones are just basically one-to-one remakes of the original film just in live action, which, yeah. who is that for? Why do we need that? The answer is we don't. What the fuck are you doing? Whereas this is a reimagining. This is, yeah. let's take the original story, let's harden it up a little bit, let's remove all the sing-songy stuff, let's give it its edge that it's supposed to have, and it will be... Probably an entirely different film, just happens to be the same plot line. Yeah. So I'm actually kind of keen for that one. 
Yeah. And guess I, what? Keen is keener than you. No. I'm never going to say be The only thing that's like kind of <laughs> weird about it is that like the main actress is like pro like uh, Chinese government. As is, I'm like, Ugh. but like, no one's perfect. Y- yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna get, you're gonna. Mm. Everyone's got skeletons in their closet. No one's perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Take, take this with a grain. Like, take this as the win that it is. Yeah. Which is that it's going to be a, a, a it's a predominantly Asian cast. I think it's an entirely Asian cast. I think it is. Yeah. Um, because there's no Mushu or any other characters that would need to be voiced by anyone else, so I believe it is an entirely Asian cast. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, uh, a, a story that people like, and it is an empowering story. Um, you know, it starts off a pretty rough in terms of like women not being able to join the army and yada yada yada, but by the end of it is you know, especially if they go the same way. I I I'm torn between this Mulan movie. Mm-hmm. I want them to get the happy ending we see in Disney. Mm-hmm. But I also want her to be exiled in disgrace. Like, yeah, is in like, the I original tale. I don't think they will because the point of it would be it's the point of the original Mulan story is gonna be intact. Like yeah. it, it's one of inspired. When, when you say original, do you mean I meant the movie? Yeah, I meant the movie. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, they're going to want to like inspire hope because no one wants to sit through two and a half hours. It's like, oh, there's nothing there. Especially a Disney movie. It's a Disney movie. Like at the end um, of the day, it's a Disney movie. It's not yeah. going to be as as you know, as deep and as raw as we want it to be. Um, but it might actually get some decent things right. Anyway, mm. that's what I've been up to. Okay. What have you been up to? Take a guess. Oh, uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. No. Damn it. Not since last time. Naruto! <gasps> oh, Naruto. <laughs> to go on with I've been Naruto. getting through it. I, got, I hit the 152 episode mark. Should be last night. Only two hundred episodes to go. No more. Three hundred. Yeah, three hundred episodes to go. Um, Jesus Christ! You're a quarter of the way there. Do yeah. this to yourself. All right. And ship you in. Yeah. Beyond the whole thing, I'm like halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but you basically finished it. Why keep watching? Just stop. You're fine. You're close enough. I now my burrito, mate. I'm up to this part where people have told me this is where it gets really good yes so like everyone's always told me you have to watch all of naruto for (laughs) this part of shippuden where it starts to really get good and when i say that i mean like naruto itself is good shippuden up until now has been good but what everyone says is that it hasn't been as good as it could have been because and everyone could agree with this naruto has like no character development yeah he is very much a... Everything I have ever seen, yeah, Naruto's been like a whingy little bitch that I yeah. can't root for. So, Naruto it's is like that all the way up to this point. Why would anyone stick with this show? So, it gets... The other characters... People are have been telling me it gets the, good for 20 okay, years. The other characters are just as important as Naruto mm-hmm. in the show. So, Naruto's the main character, but these other characters have their whole arcs. I watched this one out. episode, the only episode I've ever seen in its entirety. It was just Sasuke. And Sasuke's little brother, Sasuke kun. I mean, it's again, a, it's again. Itachi, <laughs> his <laughs> older brother. <laughs> they and were Sasuke. a little at the time, I think. Yeah, they were a little at the time. Anyway, <laughs> I've been watching it. Um, I'm now up to very sad so parts. I'm saying I'm a Naruto expert here. So, I'm up to the sad parts in Naruto. Um, Jiraiya, spoilers, Jiraiya has died. Jiraiya is Naruto's master. He's taught him everything he knows. He's one of the legendary three Sani. And essentially his grandfather. Wait, what happens to the other dude? What other dude? (laughs) Again, like I've seen like this very small block of Naruto. And every time we talk about him, Uh, I end up talking about it. The other dude is... uh, is Orochimaru? Nope. Starts with a K. Kakashi? Kakashi? (laughs) Kakashi is his master as well, but so basically the way that it, it's like Dragon Ball, how fucking Goku. Goku goes through like a million masters. Okay, okay, so so is this is this Roshi, King Kai, King Kai, or like Whis? Like where where are we in the timeline here? In this timeline, I would say um, it's probably from what I've probably like Supreme Kai. Supreme Kai. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of training, I wouldn't, Goku. I wouldn't go that high with Jiraiya. I would say he would be... Kami. No. 
No, no you're Jiraiya right. Jiraiya teach so him, Jiraiya teaches would him. Jiraiya like King Kai. Yeah, he is King Kai. He teaches him the fundamentals. He teaches and him how, the most. N- Not like fundamentals. Can I just... He teaches him master rank jutsus, but he then gets taught by a bunch of little frogs. Who Let are, me explain. Who, who are, <laughs> who are like supreme Kai level who teach him to tap into another source. Jiraiya teaches him to use all of his available power and then it goes further and to control the, the demon inside of yeah, him. So okay, so he is King Kai. Yes, yeah, he yeah. is yeah. King Kai. He's yeah. basically... Okay. So, Uruka was his childhood teacher. That is his first master and basically his dad. Grandpa mm-hmm. Gohan. Um, no, it was more like Master Roshi, I'd say. Yeah. And then Kakashi <laughs> is like Kami. Yes. Right. So he learns like how to be a badass. <laughs> and then Jiraiya is like King Kai teaching him like all about chakra control and stuff like that. Mm. And then it, I haven't gone further than that yet. He has just found what I'm up to now. He has just found out that Jiraiya is dead. Jiraiya's been dead for a long time, but no one knew. He was on a secret mission. I'm a- still, I'm still at the point of like. There are so many episodes of this fucking thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it feels like... Feels like a lot of them build up. Like it's build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, build yeah. up, build up. Is it worth it? Yeah. So far, yeah. <laughs> is, it ac- the, is it actually? Well, like I'm if the, you could have spent have all that time... Awful, I have an awful attention span. This is the fifth time I have attempted to watch Oh, right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Beforehand, I always tried to watch it in high school, and I just never got into it because I, I always had other yeah. shit. But now that I have time, I've been really into it and really invested, especially since Jump Force. The mm. only character in that show that has ever interested because this Rock is the thing. Lee? I, yeah, Rock Lee. Yeah. The, only, the only one that can't use yeah. anything. But that's the thing. He's cool. Is that th- he has a massive story in himself. And he has his own arcs. That's why Naruto is interesting because it's not always about Naruto. Okay, so the, they, the it's not like Dragon Ball where they will just be like, "Here's Yamcha." Anyway, Goku. It's this is Yamcha, and this is his backstory, and this is what's happened, and this is his goal, and this is his master, and stuff like that. Yeah, but no one would watch that show. It's fucking Yamcha. No, but that's what I'm talking about. But like, they do that for his own comic. They do that for Neji. They do that for Hinata. They do that. For, they do that for all of the. Surrounding characters that build Naruto Okay, again, 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 I understand that, but the episodes I watched, I don't give a shit about any of those characters. Yeah. They all just seem like fucking shit stains. I hate them all. I think. <laughs> Including Naruto. I think it's one of. It's. It's, it's something you, I can't tell you to go watch because you're not gonna like it if you go, okay, I have to watch it. Yeah. You have to like get to a point where you're like, oh, I oh, might as well go, go, and then you just get addicted <laughs> and you just keep yeah. watching it. Uh, it's so... something that you can binge if you have nothing else to do, <laughs> which is what I do in my free time. I will sit there and be like, what do I do? Something like Naruto is awesome because there's a shit ton of Oh, them. yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> keep scrolling it. past it on like Crunchyroll and Anime Lab. Like, I just like get to it and I'm like, do I really want to start this journey? No. <laughs> like, the journey has a good payoff. Yeah. And the reason. Does why it end? Like, does it end? It, it has like, a it has solid been... ending of Naruto's story. Naruto's story is ended. And you can see him in Boruto coaxing off his glory days. Yeah. And then right. it's very much like, yes, he still exists. Yes, he's still a character. All right. But this is now. The next Boruto's generation. story. All right, we'll get back to what you want to talk about about it because I feel like we've done this a bajillion and one times, <laughs> and yes. I just don't want to get back to it because I've got like the same question in my head again because none of the Naruto stuff sticks like <laughs> ever. Yeah, it's it just seems so overwhelming. There's a lot to the story, and I think that's why you can't understand it. Is because <laughs> and, and that's no, I'm just meaning like you can't watch an episode and then just be like. I don't understand it because it, you need yeah. to watch it from the start. Right. And watch it through. I don't know. I'm now an expert after that one Sasuke episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Know everything there is to know about Naruto. So you, need, you do need to watch through the whole thing. But even in saying that, and I get really frustrated because someone like Nina coming in and just picking up from where I am now, she'll be sitting there asking all of these questions that I don't know yet because that's what a story is. Oh, you God. find out something oh. later on. This thing has happened. Who is this person? I don't know yet. Hmm. They haven't revealed that yet. This yeah. is a story. Yeah. 
So yes. like there is a lot of stuff and that happens a shit ton in Naruto. A lot of things that also happen in Naruto is just fucking immense amounts of filler mm. and the characters no longer matter after that. It's just something that they did because the manga was behind. <laughs> but it is an awesome payoff. At the moment where I'm up to, like I said, Jiraiya's died, Naruto's just found out about it and he's gone to go trade with the Supreme Cry. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine, yeah. Um, and the frogs are teaching him sage mode, which is basically like a transformation for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that allows him to tap into more power, but he's also got the demon fox. And so yeah. he's got all of these things that he can go to now. I've seen bits of the fight that he has with Pain. He's the guy who killed Jiraiya. Mm-hmm. Pain comes in six different forms. Yes. So he has six bodies, basically. Okay. And the reason why he's called Pain is because he's an embodiment of the pain that the guy controlling him feels. So he's making people feel pain right. because he felt pain. Okay. And it's, like, it's like this whole thing. Um, but the guy who is controlling him is controlling him from a tall tower using chakra. Um, it's a and, hive mind situation. Yeah. Um, and he's a really hard dude to, def- to defeat because the guy controlling has something called the Renangan, which is stronger than sh- the Sharingan. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, and so because he's controlling them all, they all have the Renangan. <laughs> um, anyway. Hat and a hat. They, they all fight. Jiraiya kills one of them before he dies, finds out that um, he, was, he taught this guy a long time ago. So he taught like this group of three kids during the war. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. one of the people who were pain, like one of the six pains, was one of the students. The person controlling all of the pains uh, well, is one of the students. And then somebody else is one of the students as well. Somebody who's, else. Well, who's there as well? Okay. It's just like someone who's still <laughs> so, alive. It's just, just a doing. dude on the street having a coffee. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that was the third one. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't really matter that much. Oh, yeah, she, she ends up mattering a lot. Oh, right. She eats oh, a sandwich. Shit. No. Yeah, oh. she ends up okay. mattering a lot. Anyway, I'm up to this part. She ends up being the cabbages so. guy from Avatar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, she builds my cabbages. <laughs> she ends up building my a massive cool. corporation. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So, Pain now goes to invade the village. I know this part because it was spoiled for me, and everyone talks about it as this massive part in Naruto because of where Naruto gets the character development. He, Pain comes to the village and fucking kills everybody. So like everybody that you have known and loved up until this point, all of the characters, I think, does Rock Lee die? A bunch of people die, they do come back. He gets, um... Oh, what's the point? He, he gets <laughs> desert. Some people don't come back. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. a lot of people don't. But the whole point is, like, this guy has taken everything away from Naruto. He wants to kill... Well, he wants Naruto because he wants the demon fox. He wants yeah. the jin. He, he's trying to... Track that that much I learned about. Yeah. That much I did remember. I was like, yeah. he's a demon fox. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but... Seven deadly sins kind of bullshit. So his, he just is. He's after it. Mm. But Naruto's not there. He's training with the frogs in a secret <laughs> location. Um, yep. So he's gone to the leaf village. He, he like, invades it. Fucks fucking kills everyone he kills Kakashi he kills most other people but I only know about Kakashi that actually kind of hit me there for a second because like Kakashi there was like like apart from Rock Lee I like that dude he seemed yeah. alright so I, Rock Lee gets seen, absolutely decimated yeah. and it's heartbreaking to watch I've seen because Rock Lee's like I always get up so I'm guessing it's going to be like oh, I always get up and Pain's going to be like fuck off oh man um, but no. I I don't know how Kakashi does in Jesus. anime, but I've seen the manga panel and Pain lifts up a nail and shoots it through his head. Cool. After he's like trying to defend somebody and he gets trapped under Choji's a rock. Choji's dad. Yeah. He gets ah, trapped under a rock shit. Am I going to have to watch Naruto now? <laughs> Fuck. Honestly. Just watch that. I, I was watching all of Naruto and the part where Nathaniel was up to is the only part where Anika actually piqued interest and watched because it was heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I'm doing and this you like end up agreeing <laughs> with the villain. I'm oh, starting. Shit. Oh. I'm starting to like. I'm doing this grind. I'm at the point now where I've hit a big wall where it's going to take me hours. I'm like, do I just do put I it just, on in the background? Yeah. Do I just bite the bullet and put that on in the background? Because of a lot of the Naruto, clips? you don't even need to pay attention to. It's only when you get up to the serious parts, but you'll peak interest in it and turn to it. And then you'll be like, okay, that's enough. Like, it's one of those 
It's an anime that you can't... Alright, okay, because like, <laughs> Dean, Dean's seen all of it as well, right? No, he hasn't. No? He's no. played the video games, which do give you a basic rundown. Alright, I'm gonna... Shit. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this by the end of the year. I understand where you're at, because I'm considering yeah. starting One Piece. Fuck don't off! Do it, don't do it. You are bored. I've been told that that is not a <laughs> Yeah, I've been told that's not worth it. That's a thousand episodes of It's Not Worth It. Everyone has told me, Righty has told me, it is not worth it. He I am no longer in, I'm no longer considering it. <laughs> like, there is so much more you could go watch. I'm sure, I, wait, wait until it ends. If people are okay. happy with the ending, go watch it. If they're not, don't bother. <laughs> okay, so. Can I, can I finish? Finish your thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, I don't have much else to say, but basically, I do know that a bunch of people die, and Naruto gets really upset, he's not there. Um, he finds out that the Leaf Village is under attack and he goes back. By the time he gets back, a bunch of people is, are dead, the village is decimated, and um, someone's getting beaten up. And he stops paying from doing it. Um, Konohamaru, who is like the third Hokage's grandson, mm-hmm. his uncle died as well. So his uncle died and his grandfather died, and I don't know where his parents are at. But I don't know if they're in His parents um, died fighting the, um, oh. Karuma when he was born. Oh, okay, possessed. so it's a tailed beast that is yeah. inside Naruto. His parents died fighting that. He looks up to Naruto, and he's like, Naruto, you're the best. And he sees Naruto use the Rasengan. And so Konohamaru teaches himself that and kills one of the pain. Huh. Like, he, I think pain is fighting his teacher, and he sees it. He's like, I can't, I can't just let this go. And he, like, sneak attacks him and kills him. And he's, like, low-level ninja. So he like just destroys, it. and it's like this huge All demon right. factor as well. Okay. But um, in the opening at the moment, you see all of this stuff happening, and just pain, just fucking throwing these ninja around. That you're like, these guys are powerful as fuck, and he's just like, boom. Um, and right at the end of the opening, Naruto jumps like it shows him falling down from the clouds. And he's just like in this completely new outfit. He's got a big scroll on his back like Jiraiya did. Mm-hmm. And then he lands and all of these frogs are around him, like in as summons. And all the pains are in front of him and he looks up and he's in sage mode. Mm-hmm. Which is something Jiraiya couldn't even perfect. Okay. So you see that and you're like, yes, actual character development. Because up until this point, he learned the Rasengan, the Shadow Clone Jutsu, and he made up a jutsu called the Rasen Shuriken which he cannot use because it will destroy him <laughs> so he's got fuck all and then he shows up with so, this and he's just like okay this, so there's there's this... Naruto Naruto then there's Naruto Shippuden yeah mm-hmm. and then Boruto, Boruto. yeah okay just gonna get my orders right here <laughs> so I know where to fucking start but yes. I do know that Naruto destroys a lot of pains in Sage Mode Mm-hmm. And then he gets beaten down, or or has to go fight another pain. And then Hinata comes in, which is the girl he ends up marrying, and she's had a crush on Naruto since day one. But he doesn't know. I don't her. remember that character. She's she's Pink pretty Naruto. side she's, character she's until wholesome Shippen. and forgettable. Yeah, um, she's always like, oh, I love Naruto. But Naruto I remember the other like character, Sakura. Yeah, <sighs> but um, Hinata shows up. I remember it because the... it reminds me of Card Captors. <laughs> Yeah, she's the only one that can help Naruto at this point. So she goes in and she's like, he's beaten down, and she comes in to defend him. And he like looks up, and Pain's just walling, just like destroying her. And then he he's no longer in stage mode. He's out of it. He doesn't have any chakra left for that. And then I haven't seen this, but I've been told, and this has never happened in Naruto so far. He's like he goes into Demon Fox mode. But it's only been up to four tails, and it's like a cloak around him. But at this moment, he sees Hinata get hit, and it zooms in on his eyes, and his eyes like puff up and then shrink down and go red, like mm-hmm. straight away. Mm-hmm. And then it like pans out, and his seven tails in, mm-hmm. which is like the most like jumps fucking all the. It usually yeah. it goes one, then two, then three, and like it takes a long time for him to get there, but it's yeah. like straight there, and then. But- there is a payoff. It is essentially Kaioken. Each tail he gets will deteriorate his brain and destroy his body. Until if he hits nine tails, his the be- the demon fox inside of him will take over and will reform again. So he it, control it's, how many it's he a, like goes to. No, he can't. Cool, cool. 
it's a rage based yeah. and okay last question before we like are you done or is that he basically just and this one dude who is his captain at the moment can usually control the demon fox like so if Naruto goes into that form he like brings up a jutsu and can stop the fox from coming I think I've out. seen that before yeah. as mm. well he does the seven tails and he can no longer help him right he's just he's fucked yeah. yes so I have a couple of questions and then we'll move on to Kina because we probably need to wrap up soon yeah is everything explained satisfactory? Yes. Everything. Yes. I mean everything. Like like how things are done and what's going on and the nature of they this do, world. They do. I think they do realize they... half, like a quarter of the way through Shippuden, they realize that they're fucked up by not explaining how chakra works and they do all of that. Okay. Because like the thing, <laughs> the thing that bugs me the most about a lot of anime is that they don't give me enough history and lore to make sense of what's happening in that time. Oh, they give you <laughs> plenty of history and lore. Okay, good. I like history. I'm a history and lore dude. Like I love history and lore. One day we'll talk fun of NSC 10 and you'll see how much into history and lore I am yeah <laughs> essentially at this point in Naruto Shippuden is where he stops being Naruto from the original and instead of just aging he actually grows up okay. at, he is maturing at this point and he becomes a phenomenal new so how many episodes that. in is this for where I'm up to in Shippuden it's 152 152 episodes into Shippuden yeah and there's 300 in Naruto. What? I think there's 400 in Shippuden. Ha! Huh. Yeah. That is a lot. Okay. Yeah. But it I'm is... gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I will. I will assist you in fucking skipping through the filler because I did that in Naruto. I only watched like a uh, 200 episodes in Naruto. Oh great! That's Naruto. all you need to watch. Hmm. Okay. All right. A lot of it you'll know if it's filler, and then you can just skip that episode and then start watching the start of the next one. And if it looks serious, watch it. If it doesn't, skip Don't it. Don't let the episode <laughs> count scare you. I legitimately skipped an entire season because it was a season filler. Yeah. Okay. So that cut out 100 episodes. The filler is never touched on ever again? Not I some, watched some of the it rest of it and it impacted nothing. Yeah. Some of it is... But you will know if it's actual proper filler. See, there's a part of me that's like, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do the whole hog. Yeah. And I'm going to do the filler too, because what if there's some, like, goofy, like, Goku gets a license type episodes where yeah. I actually am like, this is great. This is dumb filler, but it's great. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Rarely great filler, but we'll just continue. <laughs> yeah. Keita, what have you been up to? Um, I... Not, not a terrible lot. I want to quickly talk about Final Fantasy VIII. And how I'm not going well with it. Okay. It's uh, for some reason I can't play it for any like long amount of time. Like I pick it up and I start to fall asleep. <laughs> I don't know what it is That's about fair. it. Like I'm on the second disc. I'm up to the battle where you have to fight. That's what I was like with Pokemon. I was trying to remember the game Pokemon Sword and Shield. I couldn't. Yeah. I, every time I played it, I would like play half an hour of it and fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes there are games just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm up to the boss fight uh, where you have to fight the headmaster's real boss. Oh, like Norg. Norg, yeah. Norg. <laughs> Which, that came out of Fasha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, the, so, you, like, pretty much run, like, mercenary schools. Uh -huh. And I just, like, I thought the headmaster was, like, the boss of mine. But no, you go underneath, like, you take the elevator down, and there's fucking, like, I don't know, like, fucking what's his name Jabba like giant Jabba the hard yeah. looking guy down there yeah a shit and you're like and he's the one and he communicates he's the real oh, boss of man. the school I hate to do the Naruto thing but you should get past that point because like the revelations about that are fucking wild okay <laughs> yeah but that's the thing like I, <laughs> it's nuts like n now that I'm up to a part where I have to grind or like really figure out my stats, you don't have to grind. You don't have to. to you don't have to grind in Final Fantasy VIII at all right. because the the game scales to your level. Oh, okay. All all monsters, all field monsters, all bosses, all scale to Squall's level. Okay. So if he's high level, there's, there's actually challenge runs about this where you like get Squall up to level ninety nine and then leave the rest of your party at one because the, all the monsters will be ninety nine. Oh, oh, and okay. then you'll be level one, and you'll have or level yeah. eight or whatever they start at, yeah. and you have to beat them because like there, there are challenge runs about that. The entire game scales to your. That's why the junctioning system in Final Fantasy VIII is like Man. a really good idea, but broken in practice because you can actually 
if you focus on magic and junctioning the correct magic, magic. you can make your stats ridiculous at level 20 and then blast through the game with no problem. That's because cool. every monster is level 20 then. Yeah. But you've got um, you've got the stats of someone level 99. Yeah. So it it's a little bit broken in that way. They didn't quite figure out the balance there. But yeah, it's all balanced to that. So if you've just figured out the junction system, which doesn't take a lot, like you can Google a couple of things and figure it out. I might do that. Um, because and, yeah. like to me, like this game is just summons. Like it is just GFing over yeah, and over you, and over. You've done it wrong if you're doing that. <laughs> you, you have done it wrong if you're doing that. Because you shouldn't... If you... I don't think there's a correct way to play, but if you're using the junction system correctly, you never summon once. Okay. Ever. Those summons, are, they, they, what you use them for is their abilities to junction other things to you and keep using those. Okay. You never use summoning. Not in that way. Okay. Yeah. Because, like, every fight, like, I take forever for That's you. how I played it when I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, um, wow. <laughs> Alpha male. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you beta fucking enemy. <laughs> No, uh, but also, like, like seriously, like m what might actually be better is if you Google a quick ways of like how to get through that game quickly and then bail back to the start and go through it again. Because sometimes if you get part way through that because of the scaling level system, it's hard to get back and fix yeah. fix your problems. Um, but yeah, you should get through that game because yeah. like where you are right now is where the story starts to turn and go a little bit bonkers. Okay. <laughs> and get a little bit like, wait, what? <laughs> like... Cool. Which is the part I like about uh, Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I, even, like I also just did like a bunch of like, like I went through everything in the compilation of Final Fantasy VII except for like the game they just watched like a really good like recap videos of. Yeah. Um, and like reading the books and shit like that. And like okay, yeah, there's a lot of shit that yeah. actually happened in this. It's got game. some stuff in it that's just like I. <sighs> I forgot what Kate Fifth was. <laughs> And then I like realized, like, oh shit, I completely forgot that Kate Fizz, you know Kate Fizz from Final Fantasy VII? Uh, the, the cat thing. Little cat thing. The Scottish fun. cat. Yeah. Oh, chips and gravy. Yeah. Nope. You'll know it if you've seen. If it's not in Kingdom Hearts, I don't know too much no, about it. I know you played Final Fantasy VII, but that was like ages ago. He rides. Oh, that fucker! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about. It was... So yep. I forgot that he was a robot controlled by like a Shinra exec, but then he's also on top of like a big Moogle robot. So like the Shinra exec is controlling two robots at the same time, but like gives him this, well, yeah, gives him this weird accent. Yeah. And he's like kind of a main character in like Doja Cerberus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I yep, completely yep, forgot yep, about yep, all uh, that. Yeah, yep. I know who you're talking about. Like Doja <laughs> Cerberus just was like solidified. That fucking Scottish cat. Yes. I also remember nothing about Dojo Server since I watched that recap video. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. I okay. remember yeah. being stuck on that game for far too long. I yeah, remember. the um in eight that 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 dude you're facing is like they're called the Shumi tribe, his race. And they have a significant they have they play a significant role in the history of this world that oh, is just shit. brushed aside. Oh. Like, it's literally one line, which if you miss, you're like, wait, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a second. That's really fucking important. <laughs> and if you miss it, you never know. It, is, like, it doesn't actually have any consequence to the plot, yeah. mm. but to the way the mm. society has been structured in this world, they are incredibly important. Jesus Christ. And it's so oh. dumb. Oh, God, I love that game so much. So, it's Final Fantasy VIII. I also have been playing the Doom sequel. It's been great. Doom yeah. sequel. Doom 2. You mean Doom 2? Like, I was going to say, stop! <laughs> <laughs> Do, I've been playing the original Doom and Doom 2. On, on what? PS4. They ported... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, when was ported, that? Oh, like, last year. Oh, okay. Uh, they came, originally came out, like, not great because... Like, I mean, I had, get it, because Doom can be ported to anything. But yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, those games are... Good. Yeah, I did not realize. It's like, fucking Doom. Yeah, I knew I knew Doom was good, but I thought it was only in the context of 1993. No, no, no. Doom is a great game. That's why everything's copied Doom ever since. Every shooter. You know? Yeah, that's why they were called Doom clones for like, the longest time. There's like yeah. a there's like a chart on Wikipedia where it's just like Doom clone versus first person shooter, and then it just shows like the end changing names. Yeah. Like eventually uh, everyone. But yeah, like everyone, like everything after Doom was called a Doom clone until probably Halo. Hey, yeah, you're right. Until Halo Combat evolved and then Halo became the gold standard, but Halo was a riff on Doom originally. Like the developers yeah. Honestly, designed green suit. 
Yeah, I see no, it. the developer <laughs> said they designed Master Chief as an homage to the Doom guy. Yeah, yeah. Which is why when Doom similar. 2016 came well, out, everyone was just like, known as the Doom guy. Yeah, yeah. the Doom guy. Well, I think guy. they tried to like change his name to the Doom he has Slayer. He has a name. Yeah. The, to the Doom Slayer. No, no, he has a name now. Oh, yeah, yeah. He has a name he's in like canon. Like Blaskovich or something. Like, no, he's that's, a descendant of that, that. that's Wolfenstein, dude. No, no, no. He's like a descendant of. No, no, no. That's a theory. Of the that's, that's I thought there was enough evidence that it said yes. No, I don't think they have said that yet. Oh, okay. It looks like they might go that way by the end of like Wolfenstein Three if they decide to. Did you? I also played Youngblood. I haven't talked to you about that. Did you end up playing Youngblood? No. Do you care about spoilers? No. They open up the multiverse theory. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> quick rundown. What is Youngblood? You Wolfenstein and Youngblood It takes place in the 80s Wolfenstein Youngblood Yeah Wolfenstein. Okay cool. Yeah uh, you, yeah, you're going around looking for your dad uh, Your dad discovers portals to multiple dimensions The one he talks about is the one our, our world Okay But that's basically like all the Wolfenstein reboots Everyone wants the Doom universes to be in there as well Because Doom and Wolfenstein has always been kind of connected mm-hmm. um, So yeah is this re- what this really opened up is my 2018 prediction that uh, Bethesda Smash Brothers is going to be announced. <laughs> They're setting the groundwork. I wouldn't be mad. Oh. No, the the thing. Like I thought about this as a joke prediction. And I'm like, this is good. You can get Skyrim guy, you can get Doom guy, uh, Wolfenstein guy, Fallout guy, Fallout guys. Yeah, <laughs> the guy from the Pip Boy. Be the best. Yeah, yeah. Like get like, Pit Boy in there and the Pete Hines. guy and Pete Hines. <laughs> yeah, and like, Todd Howard. I was yeah. gonna say, and the ultimate villain, like the hand yeah, character, it's, it's just Todd, just yeah. going yeah. like, by Skyrim. It's the source code, it's like gross, <laughs> just different versions of Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. It's the source code of Fallout seventy six. Every time you get hit, your coins fall out of your. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, every everybody... time you get hit, it actually takes from your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Doom is and good. adds to his. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Doom's great. Like it only has the horizontal axis to work with, not yeah. the vertical, yeah. which yeah. is something that I'm like not used to at all. But it's just like line up, shoot. But it's not like, Doom quite... quite floaty compared to like every other first person shooter. Hadn't existed. quite figured out 3D yet. They were no, getting there. Like they that, were getting it's there. all sprite based first person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is cool. I like that art style and everything. Um, and seeing all the promo, like because the sprites are very distinctive. Like all most sprites are. Now I'm thinking the monster design for Doom Eternal, I'm like, oh, I, I see where these are coming from now. Mm-hmm, yeah. Whereas playing Doom 2016, I was just like, yep, these are... Um, Generic games. alien demons. Yeah, they have cool... Like, the designs were always cool, but like now oh, I yeah. know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, That's cool. I like the fact that, yeah. Yeah, I got all three Dooms, and then when I pre-order... Wait, Doom 3? Yeah. <laughs> they were all dirt cheap. Okay. Um, and I'm like, um, I'll try that. Doom mm. 3, I hear, is not great, but okay. Yeah, I, I know it's pros and cons sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. But um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is uh, Harley Quinn, the animated series finished. Oh. Oh. Uh, Harley Quinn was on DC Universe, the DC app, which is only in America and Canada, I think. Um, I don't know what it's on in Australia, probably Foxtel. Mm. But um, yeah, no, it's a really good. I really enjoyed it. It's it's an adult humor um animated series. Quick question. Is adult humor actual adult humor, or is it just dick pussy boob? Ha ha ha. There's a little bit of that, uh, a sizable amount of that, but it's also like there's some like I can't think of any jokes that like. Oh, I don't need a d- yeah. defining joke. I just I. It's just... not adult swim adult humor. It's it's like I don't know adult things. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not a mature show. Like the whole point of the very immature show. Oh yeah, it's Harley Quinn. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. Like Harley wants to. Like she breaks up with the Joker, and then she wants to join the Legion of Doom to prove that she's better than the Joker. The Legion of Doom. Yeah, Legion of Doom. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's a wrestling tag team. So I was just. Oh like, okay. Wait a second. He's gonna join Animal and. <laughs> Okay, whatever. Yeah, Bane sorry. and Scarecrow. And Animal and Hawk. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> um, and then that's the point of the issue. She ended up like recruiting some people, like uh, Doctor Psycho, who's typically a Wonder Woman villain. They made him a it's a super misogynist. Like he gets outcast mm. from the Legion of Doom because he calls this woman the C word, and he continues to do it. 
I love that they're like, we're villains, dude, but you can't say yeah, exactly. that. <laughs> Even the Joker and Lex are like, bro, <laughs> like, can't, whoa. You can't say that to people, dude. You'll hurt their feelings. Let's yeah. go kill some people. And like, that's the thing, like, every other, every other word. Let's go tear not... some families apart, but you can't say that to a woman. I'm about bro. to murder half the planet, but dude. The Joker. Like... I've been abusing her for years, and not once have I called her a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. And like, that's the thing, like. I mean, I get it. Like, you. There's gotta a, draw the line somewhere. You gotta draw the line somewhere, but also like, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a weird line. It's a weird line to draw. Yeah. It, with super villains. Definitely yeah. made by Americans. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Oh, uh, but so it still plays funny. like when you're watching it, like, yeah, this is this is funny. Uh then uh, another character is Clayface. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Clayface. Um, which they take his actor um origin story fucking amplify it he's like proper stage theater guy all the time like, like yes i will take on the role of whoever blah 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 blah, blah. like create this own backstory and then transform into them like literally because he's clayface mm-hmm. um he's really good uh then there's king shark who's like this he's like an it hacker guy but then like yeah we'll get um, oh man blood will fucking set him off he's like just a super chill guy trying to be optimistic all the time but then like by the end of it he's like this fucking sucks eh hey? mm-hmm. fuck <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry I just went on the wrestling you, you got me started now with the Legion of Doom and you went King Shark and I could think of was that wrestler called Shark Boy and Lava Girl no, he's just called Shark woman. Boy. He just wears <laughs> he just wears a shark mask and just is a sh- he's a wrestling shark. That's his character. Yeah. He's like a shark. It's just the left shark if you got violent. Yeah, <laughs> wrestling's on my mind because they just had a show in Saudi Arabia last night, which uh, okay. was problematic, and they did some weird, dumb things on that show, which have put the world like the wrestling world in like a little bit of a state right now. Like, everyone's, a little, <laughs> everyone's a little bit like. Oh god, what did you just do? So, I think that's her main crew. There's probably one other person I'm forgetting. And then there's Poison Ivy. They're yeah. like, Poison Ivy's not like she's not a villain. She's a eco terrorist or eco. Her thing is, which is what it is in the comics. She's like, no, I'm fighting for nature. I'm the good guy. Like, yeah, I want to like stop global warming and shit. Like, can we not call me a she's super just villain, an please? Extremist. Yeah. Um, which is, yeah, great. And she has, like, a plant, like a piranha plant, mm-hmm. that's always, like, high and shit. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> pretty much. Um, and, yeah, she controls plants and all that. I was trying to think. Uh, and then they eventually get a guy, like, this old, like, Cold War dude, who's got, like, he's in a wheelchair, he's got, like, robot arms and shit. And I'm going to spoil something, because it fucked me up. We were involving his character. He can literally transform into a car. And what that means is his arms, like, he gets more metal that comes out and it fucking tears his flesh open and he literally transforms his entire body into a car and then they go around a whole wheels track. What? Yeah, that's like, <laughs> the, like the penultimate episode. Sort of Wait, thing. so he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> and they <laughs> call, and not like... Ah, he goes he's like on a Hot Wheels shit. track. Yeah, he's like Rocket Arms. Arms. Would have a lot of They literally the just took out oh, a joke from like X Men, and they're like, "What do they call you, Hot Wheels?" <laughs> to Professor X. To be fair, I think Joke. Oh no, Harley set up the uh, Hot Wheels track. Wait, so why? Why did they transform? Why does he turn into a car? Uh, because they needed to get from point A to point B really quickly. And they needed to get over the Hot Wheels track. Wait, down. does he want to turn into a car? Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, I thought this was a, like a traumatic thing. Where this yeah. dude was just I like, like, no, it's like, like physically car. traumatic. But like, I think, go oh, look, I'm going to transform into the car. <laughs> like, Rick and Morty transforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, that's how grotesque it no, is. No, 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 I know. But I was just... <laughs> Like, thinking, oh, this poor guy who's like, I have malevolent intent. What the fuck is happening to me? <laughs> no. Okay. That's still fucked what, up. Did you just swear? <laughs> Bro, that's fucked up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's a war criminal, basically. That's <laughs> super fucked. Why? <laughs> what? Yeah. Why? He turns into a 2001 Honda Civic yeah. and goes down his enemy. <laughs> <laughs> that's not like he's like... I mean, is it like a sweet ride? Or is he just like... A dash shit box. <laughs> yeah. I don't. It's not a flash what car. to his organs and his and face? his flesh. Does he transform back from the he car? He does, and he thinks perfectly okay. Okay. All right. Um, Except he's in a wheelchair. He's just, just not right. Uh, yeah. 
Honest question, and I really did. He want turn to... into the car, and that's the reason he's I, in the wheelchair I, I, now. No, he's do a... they discuss if he is a a front wheel drive? <laughs> <laughs> no, they go. His legs. That would have been a, that would have been a great joke, but no. I honestly am curious if he is a front wheel or a <laughs> rear wheel drive. No, he's an all, all terrain, terrain. All terrain vehicle, man. <laughs> All terrain, all the, wheel drive. So yeah, yeah, Harley trying to get into the Legion of Doom, but also like the abusive relationship thing of like falling in love with your ex again, like trying to actually set yourself apart from your abuser. Yeah. Like it does stuff with that, and it just ties in with all of that, and it's, it's a bunch of great stuff. Uh, my favorite character is probably Gordon, like Commissioner Gordon. My brain went Ramsey. <laughs> yeah, same. Good Because Ram- he, he, would, he wouldn't survive in that. It's fucking stale, you cunt. Oh, you can't stay that here. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, he's British and allowed to say that. Oh, yeah, yeah right. American. It's like, oh, it's cute with the accent. No, um... <laughs> yeah, it's Commissioner Gordon. They, they portrayed him like... Because he's a nighttime shift most of the time, he's fucking tired as fuck. He's wired on coffee all the time. He's freaking out. Just like Batman, please come. Batman, please come. Ah, Batman! <laughs> all right, um, so he's just off fucking off his face on Nodos and Ritalin. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> the Riddler. The Riddler just deals, that's his place in this series. He just deals Ritalin. It's like they call me the Riddler. Tell me a riddle. I don't fucking do that shit anymore, dude. Just take some riddles. It stops me. Am I <laughs> Final thing, my other favorite character is Bane. They keep the Tom Hardy voice of like, oh, oh good, yes. Hi, is he, have you is been he... invited to the barbecue this weekend? Okay, they keep that, but is he back to being a professional wrestler? He's the generic thing that I don't know if, like really does the wrestler thing. He, he does he wear a luchador mask? He. He wears the, the bean, the most common bean mark, not necessarily the super luchador one, like from... Damn it! Or something. Love the super luchador. I like the luchador boy. No, I do too. I'm like, yeah. But like, this is like the venom. I like El Bano. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just the straight up, just like, let's like, keep the Tom Hardy thing. And he talks all the time like that. Like, yeah. okay, guys, let's go and blow up the city. Wanna put your hand over your mouth a little bit? He, they, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the Tom Hardy version. They, like, you can hear him in this. <laughs> Oh, yeah. nice. He's still a high pitch from no region. Bane, why would Bane sound like that? I love it. I love steroids. Yeah, St- steroids heighten your voice. I guess. And I, and I guess that's where they're going with yeah. it. Yeah. Like, like, I don't think Tom Hardy, like, that's the point of Tom Hardy. It was like, it was meant to be like, this realistic. I guess he was on roids. Again, I, I've watched wrestling for a long time. Not all roided out people have high voices. No, people who over do Roy. Dude, Hulk Hogan's voice is pretty low, brother. <laughs> Yo, brother. Brother. That's a that's a fake voice. That's a roided out dude. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Hulk Hogan. He baby. he was roided out pretty badly in the eighties, yeah. and like that's a matter of yeah, no, fact. Yeah. Like, not 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 yeah. like a not like a oh wrestlers are roided out. Like yes, yeah, some of them are, but he was specifically very roided out in the eighties, and he was very much. And his voice now is very much the same. Like it's not, yeah. it's not all the same. Brock Lesnar's voice is pretty fucking high pitched. <laughs> that dude's definitely on roids. Come at me, bro. But um, yeah, not all roided out people have that. It is a possible side effect. Yeah. Mm. The only way we'll ever know is for him to drop his deck so we can see how small the raisins are. <laughs> That's the only true test. I mean, I like... want to see Bane's balls. <laughs> Give, me Give me the balls, balls Bane. <laughs> 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 Pulls them down. Where are they? <laughs> Where are the balls? Grabs him by the fucking venom, dude. Where are the nuts? <laughs> just can't see them. <laughs> <It's> inverted. <laughs> On that note, if you enjoyed this episode, please click that like button, subscribe. Uh, what's your favourite Doom game or Final Fantasy? Who? Or Shippuden character or episode. My Anything. favorite Shippuden character is Whiskers the Wonder Cat. I'm gonna die, aren't I? <laughs> I'm gonna die. You're gonna die. <laughs>
That's all right. Overdose on Naruto. I'll do it. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to finish yeah, it up good. and then we're going to talk about good. it. Yeah, I will just inject that pure liquid Naruto into your veins. And then we'll talk come about come back it. to us. Yeah. And then <laughs> we'll, maybe we'll... At least watch like the first... Until after the tuning exams, which is pretty pretty much at the start. I think that's where I stopped watching the first time. Yeah, that's where I usually <laughs> stop watching. <laughs> you stopped watching at the most interesting part of Naruto. I know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not long <laughs> after that, you can just skip the rest of Naruto if you want. But So you what want... I'm going to do is I'm going to watch it and then I think what we're going to do, because it's probably going to take a while. Remember that Kingdom Hearts one we talk, we did, the mm-hmm, four hour sure. fucker? It's probably going to take that time. So what we might do is set up at my house with air conditioning or your house or somewhere with air conditioning and do this one. Mm-hmm. Just because this box is hot. It is. Yes. Or we could wait till the middle of winter because that's probably how long it'll take. Or it'll take you exactly 12 months and we'll be exactly in the same position no to get up to where we said dude i got a lot of spare time right now and a lot of grinding in final fantasy to do i'll get through it don't worry (laughs) it won't take long all right i'll be fine i'll figure it out but anyway like share subscribe etc until next time next time catch you later Bye. bye thank you for coming